medium and large scale apps are much different to smaller applications. For example, one thing I really noticed is that you don't need a way to track your code or really think about anything you're doing on small apps because it's such a small thing that you could just easily catch an error or manage whatever happens. However, when dealing with these larger scale applications, ones with thousands or tens of thousands of lines of code, hell, even hundreds of thousands of lines of code, there are certain things that you need to do and learn in order to easily manage uh, make new features and to run the product well. And so what I'd like to do in this video is just show you everything I do to manage my medium and large scale applications. And by the way, I run a solo dev company. Like I am the only employee for all of my software as a service applications. So these are just things that have worked for me in my own experiences. But I think if you want to run your own company and want to do it alone, this perfectly applies to you. Other than that, Get out of here. And by the way, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It would honestly really go a long way. It costs you nothing, but it means the world to me. And that being said, let's get into how I manage medium and large scale applications. And so there are a couple of things that I do to manage these applications. But I think the main thing we should look at first is why we need to do this, right? There's a reason why big companies have certain processes and do certain things. And if I get out my handy dandy icons here, let's get a code icon real quick. And so let's say you are some sort of small company, right? You're a tiny little company, maybe has a, a to-do app or if, something simple, right? Not even a company, you're just someone that made a simple app like a to-do app and it has like a hundred lines of code. It is much easier for you to just upload this to the web. Let me just do something like this. Let's do this for browser, okay? I love this actually. It's so much easier for you to just write code real quick and upload it to the web without any problems because your app is so simple, right? That's understandable, I've, gone, I've done it. You've probably done this as well. But, okay, in a company and in terms of like just larger scale applications with software as a service apps and dealing with people's money and doing all that stuff, there are things you have to do and take into consideration so that when we work up, right, this is the main thing, when you work up in an amount of users and stuff like that, it is seamless. You don't wanna stay in this process up over here because you can't do this in a large application, you just can't. Instead, you have to follow a couple of things, just like this, you know, you have a couple of steps that you need to do and follow in order to then deploy and have a really good well and well-run application. Actually, let me just move everything a bit down. And so the main part of managing large scale application code versus smaller applications or just very basic apps is the both the naming and the file structure. These are very different and we should really look at how we do this with applications in the in the larger scale. And so a great example of this, if I open up my Nizzy starter kit here, um, you can see that I am, you know, it's, it's a still small application. We've barely really gotten started, but because I'm trying to think in the future in terms of scale, I'm really trying to set in place a good way to both name and structure my application. And here's how I do it, okay? If you want like a simple way of following things, just keep the names of your files and folders consistent. So here you can see everything is sort of, um, the same, if there's a space, there's a dash, and the rest, if there's nothing, is just like a, a non-capital file name. And whenever there is a bunch of aspects of one part, so let's say authentication, right? That will be, have its own folder within the components, and this will be the UI for my auth, basically. And I just organize it this way because personally, I like it, and also, it just makes it easier to update things. Imagine all of this was in here, like in the UI part, it would just be an absolute freaking nightmare. And again, the same thing goes for the application, like the, uh, the actual, you know, code. Everything for routes, in terms of routes, is in here. And then when it's time to work on my APIs, for example, all I need to do is just create an API folder like this, and then within this, I will have different aspects of API. So for example, I'll have an auth API. So all my auth APIs will be here. My email APIs will be in the API email folder and so on and so forth. And so in terms of naming and file structure, at least what you want to do and what it could look like is naming consistency. That's all you really need. People will try to sell you on a way of doing things, but generally, don't take it too seriously unless your company is telling you to do it a specific way. Obviously, you have to do it a specific way. Just do with what you like, but as, as long as you keep it, you know, the same way, it will work out. And obviously, why we're doing this is for confusing reasons or confusing or confusions. Like, it, sure, right now, you will remember if you put like a, a an auth file 
in the main part of your application. Like you can get away with that now when your application is new, but imagine it scales up. It will be an absolute nightmare when you have hundreds of files in one area and you don't know what's going on. So just keep it in a in the same spot if you need to name things the same way for looks and to keep it at that. And so the next aspect of a medium application, and this is actually just a process I go through. So I'm just walking you through everything. So we tend to start with the actual writing code. So here we just write the code. Why did I even do a circle? <laughs> we start out by just writing the code. What we do next is log it to GitHub or a code tracking application. You know what, I'm actually gonna do something like this because it's just annoying. Why we use something like GitHub to track our code is not just to know what's going on with the code and know, you know, have like snapshots of your applications, but rather to collaborate with others. You know, if you have an open source project or you're working with a team, you can, you'll be able to collaborate with other people. And also, right, like we said earlier, it gives you a way to track your code if you ever need to add any more features. And so in a basic application, what this would look like for me, right, is I'm over here, let's say I code up a new feature. I wanna work on a new feature, I'm coding it up and I finished it. Rather than directly committing this to the main web and run the risk of having an error, I will commit this to GitHub, just like this. Let me just actually do this right now. Let's just say I changed something here. Let's say, haha, okay? I will personally commit this to GitHub, updated description like this, and I will commit it to the main page and push it. And if we go to GitHub, hopefully you can see in the Nizi starter kit uh, application over here that we have a commit that just happened, right? We can just go over to it. We can see what happened and you can see we updated to haha. And so let's say, right, I didn't like that or I noticed that there's a bug in my application. You know, I go to my application, I'm like, oh my God, there's an error, what, what, what should I do? Because we committed it to GitHub, we can just go back to the older version of our application, go over here and use this version of the application to continue writing our code without the mistakes that we had. And because we tracked it in a diligent way and we're adding features one at a time, this just makes it so much easier to add features and to build things in a freer way because you don't have to worry about remembering anything. Like imagine you're just committing things all the time and you run into a mistake. You will not know what the mistake is. You will worry you have to like focus on, you know, fixing the future right away. Or instead here, because you're able to track your code and you're able to do all these things, you don't have to worry about a single thing. And so every time you add a feature, I just recommend you push it to GitHub. Like with the thing I just showed you, that's very small. I wouldn't commit that, or at least I shouldn't. I do it sometimes. I will just commit it to GitHub and then push it to uh, the actual application. And so as of now, right, in a regular sort of application, we've written our code, we've pushed it to GitHub. And you know, in a regular company, here's where people would review your code and then push it into the application or do some testing. And that is exactly what I tend to do here or intend to do, I don't even know. Actually, let's use something like this, this is pretty cool. Bro, Racer, you gotta fix your app, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck's going on? There we go. So again, we've written the code, we've pushed it to GitHub. Now we need to actually test the code to see if there's any problems with it. Now, typically you'd wanna catch the errors here, but sometimes it gets through everything and you know it's on your application and you notice that there's an error there. This is why I have this step here when working on large applications. And frankly, I don't want the client to catch the error. I just don't like when someone else finds the error. I need to find this error. It's kind of a problem with us. Regardless, we have the testing in place so that either before committing, you know, you could actually just have the testing before the commit, but sometimes you might've com committed it and it's on your application. I still test things on my main application rather than local sometimes. I just find it better because A, it's faster and B, why not look at how this could be, like the errors, why not catch it in the real time uh, code base? Think of testing as something you do before the GitHub or after, but personally, if you're, if you're asking me, um, now that I think of it, I should actually do the testing before pushing to GitHub. But regardless, for testing, okay, you might think that I'm using some complicated system. I literally just manually go through all aspects of my app or the feature that I added and then check if there is any errors. So I'll basically just like stress test it. So let's say I added a courses page or a roadmap page or actually, yeah, let's say the roadmap page. I will literally just go through maybe each link, check if everything's working, maybe press this one, see if this one's working. You can see it's working and then maybe go into the authentication, 
press sign out. As you can see here, the it's actually working in real time. Um, sign out is not working. Don't know why, don't know how. So let me just refresh the page. Maybe that's why, and there we go. So I just noticed that's not working. So if I try again, sign out is not working again. So we can see why that's not working, but clearly it's, it's just not working. So if I refresh, it might work now, yeah. So I gotta work on that. So this is a perfect example of why we stress test and, and run through these. Um, I, again, I just basically go through everything, look through a feature and then basically just try to find an error and then note it down. So what this could look like for me is I go to Notion, go into my, where is it? Software checklist and in here, I will just add sign out not working and then I will eventually work on it. And then this leads us to the final aspect, which is, and I'll go down over here because of the space, we don't have much space. And it is to look at the user logs. So sometimes when we are building apps and we try to test things, we will not catch any errors, any bugs or any issues with the app. You know, we built out a feature very dil diligently and we tried our best. We tested it, we committed it to GitHub and we kind of, we think that there is no errors. However, when we have a way of looking at user logs and what the users are doing, we can catch errors that they ran into and do our best to fix it without even them contacting us. So actually I'm gonna name this log and then here we can say catch errors, just like that. And so to do that right is typically in wherever you deployed your application, you can look at the user logs. So for me, I committed it to Vercel and they have a logs feature where I can see what happened. And here you can see that I had a little bit of an error. Um, Apple touch icon, I wonder what this is about, but you can see regardless that there was an error and I need to fix it. And you can see over here as well, there's a 303 error and it says see other. So clearly there is an error going on when using this part. You, know, you can see settings, settings, but anyways, the whole point of the logs, okay, is to try to catch errors that the user is running into. And essentially after I do all of these, then I think in my opinion, the application is ready to go. But this is basically what I think it should look like for a medium or large scale application. This is what it should be run like, especially if you're like a solo developer, this is what I am doing. I know again, in bigger companies, it is different because you're dealing with so many more people, so much more code, and it's extra large scale applications, it's like way, way bigger. But I think by following this, you will have the perfect recipe for both lack of errors and catching the errors that you need of coding and of doing good things like committing to GitHub. And I think by following all of this, you put yourself in a perfect position for an easy way to scale up. I know if you're in, still in a small application phase, uh, then this does not matter. But as you scale up, as you get to 500 users, to 1,000 users, to 2,000 users, I think then you will start to feel it if you're just constantly following this weird way of coding without GitHub, without testing, without any sort of file structure versus once you're able to follow these things, you will literally thank yourself later. If you wanna join the Nizzy's community, I will leave that somewhere. We have over a thousand developers. It's a perfect place for developers. If you wanna start a business, if you wanna just talk to people, have a community, then I will leave that down below. If you like this video, then check out the video on the screen. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.